Alright, today we're doing a tutorial on how to add a CG mountain into your shot. Um, especially if your footage is shaky or if you need to put it behind trees or buildings, this is a great tutorial because we're going to be covering motion tracking and sky replacement. So, this is what the shot's going to look like pretty much. Alright, let's get started. Input your footage. Oh. You need to render this out. Oh. Render this out. Put this in and uh, add it to render queue. And render it out as a JPEG sequence. Because for me, I found that to work the best for motion tracking in Mocha. So, render that out and it'll render in separate pictures for every frame so make sure to create a folder for your, like on your desktop or something you don't want a whole bunch of pictures just around your desktop so create a new folder in your desktop and select that folder for right here and that'll be that and render that and we'll continue alright now that we've got that rendered out you've got all these pictures that's why we um, created a new folder to keep all the uh, frames in there so we don't have a whole bunch of pictures just everywhere so yeah create a new folder and open up that folder and actually you don't need to open it, you can close it open up mocha and don't worry you probably have mocha if you're watching this after effects tutorial you just don't know it because if you bought after effects legitimately you should have mocha and if you cracked after effects and you don't have mocha you get i guess you could crack mocha but you shouldn't because that's illegal so go up here and to create a new project, uh, create a new project up here, and choose. And my folder already opens up, but if yours doesn't, find your folder and just click on one of the pictures, and click open. And then make sure everything's right. Everything should be already automatically right. So click OK, and let that load. And Mocha is a great program. It tracks perfectly. So. I recommend getting Mocha if you don't have it already and tracking everything with Mocha. So click up here on this little squiggly line by the magnifying glass, create X spline layer thing tool thing, and find spots in your video that are going to be throughout the video. So you see this tree? If you go to the end of the video, that tree is going to be there. But not the top of the tree, only the middle. Surround so the middle area, find like six spots that you know are going to be good tracking spots. So right here, right here, right here, right here, one over here somewhere, and we'll do one more just for shits and giggles. All right, click right here. If you hold your mice, if you hold your mice over it, it should say track forward. And click that button and track forward. And watch the magic consume you. Okay, okay. Now we finished tracking it. And everything's done tracking. It got to the end of the video. It only takes, it's so much faster than tracking in After Effects. Even though we did like 20 points. So get Mocha. And just, if you don't even have Mocha, just search in your uh, search bar for it. It's probably there. But let's get, let's get going. Glare new null object. And create that null object and go back to Mocha. And there's many different ways of working with track data in Mocha. There's complicated ways, but we're going to do a really simple way with null object. So go into export tracking data. Make sure it's on After Effects transform data. And the one all the way to the bottom, After Effects transform data. And click copy to clipboard. And there you go. Go back to After Effects and go to the beginning of your null object. Go to Edit, Edit, Paste. And now you see your null object has all these keyframes. Open your null object up, Transform, Turn off Scale. 
But make sure you already have it clicked off so you don't turn all of them off. If you accidentally turn everything off, go on Edit, Undo, and then turn off Scale, and go on Anchor Point, Edit, Copy, go on Position, Edit, Paste, and then turn your Anchor Point off. So what we basically did is switched anchor point and position around, so now all we have is position and rota uh, rotation. You don't really need scale unless you're zooming in, which I'm not doing. And if you're doing a tutorial with, with that you're zooming in, do scale, but it'll slow down your rendering time, so I won't do that. But if you go through this and watch this little red square or null object, it follows the video perfectly. Uh, now, open up your image that you're going to use. For me, it's this mountain right here that I just found on Google and cut out in Photoshop. Very simple. If you don't know how to cut things out in Photoshop, just comment and I'll do another tutorial on Photoshop. So, take that and... Drag it into your project. And drop it in. Alright, a mountain's there, but it's in front of our trees, and we don't want that, so I'm going to flip this real fast. Okay. Alright. That looks good. Um, Alright, it's in front of the trees, but we're, we'll worry about that in a little bit. So, parent that. This little squiggly tail thing, if you don't know what parenting is. Parent that to your null object and it should say under parent null one and now we can go throughout our video and our mountain is attached to our video which is dandy but it doesn't look like a real mountain because mountains usually don't grow on trees so when you put it behind the trees this story gets kind of complicated but it's not that complicated at all so it doesn't get complicated but you want to go onto under your clip and go on con click control D to duplicate it bring the duplicated clip above your mountain and go on turn everything else off turn the eye off for everything else and okay click on the, uh, your duplicated clip at the top rename it and rename it as Matt. Is that how you spell Matt? I don't care. Rename it. Just rename it something so you can differentiate it from your original clip. And go on Effect. Effect. Color Correction. Color Correction Colorama. Oh yeah. And it should look all funky. Go on Output Cycle. And go on ramp gray. Click right here at about 90 degrees to the left. Click, click on it and create a new black. And now drag that until your video is really, really contrasty. So your sky and everything else is almost, is almost pitch black. So like right around here. And if you need to fine tune it, add another white. And bring that in. And that, that looks fine so turn the eye off for that and turn the eye back on for your mountain and your clip take your mountain and luma mat invert it so see now it's behind the trees but that's only because it's not actually behind your footage it's only behind the mat that we just created so kind of looks rough but we can go back into our mat and fine tune everything a little bit. Add more trees, take away some trees. That looks fine. Alright. Oh, my bad. Edit, undo. Okay. I'm not going to go into detail, but you're going to want to work on that for the most part. But another thing is. If you go back into our mat, turn the eye back on, you'll see down here that even the grass down here is going to be translucent too. Everything is going to be translucent if we uh, luma invert it. 
So we can go back to our mountain, turn this back off, double click on your mountain picture, and create a mask. It's just to add more of a distance thing. It's just a good effect. So go about halfway over your mountain and click F and feather your mountain about like 164. I love that number. Maybe even more. Like 200 is great. Okay, now back. go back to your composition and it looks a lot better. That all depends on what you want yours to look like. So we need to color correct it because it's too blue it just doesn't look like it fits into the video but we're getting there okay uh, go click on your mountain picture effect color correction levels now click down here where these little circles are and click red click up here and click red now try to match the contrast of your mountains and your and your uh, original clip change this once you get the red down go down here and change it to green then go back up to levels and change levels to green I always forget that and do yeah, just go back back up to levels and change levels to green. Pretty contrasty, and then do blue. God damn Facebook. Okay, switch to uh, switch to blue, and then blue is pretty. Con oh my god, blue is pretty. It distracts me. Blue is pretty contrasty, so we're gonna bring that up. And then click down here and do RGB, and it seems like look before after. It fits so much better into your clip. Wait, this was this needs to be wider. My bad. I'm just I have a terrible case of OCD, so I need to fix everything. It looks a lot better. It might be oh, that's fine. It's a tutorial. I don't care. Just kidding. I care. But I'm gonna bring up the blue. And then we can do a curves adjustment too. Well, we don't need a curves adjustment. Just play around with it. Throw in a curves adjustment. Throw in your RGB. Make it more contrasted. Just play around with it until you have everything looking nice and right. But I'm going to add more blue to that. Alright, let's see how this looks. And let's play that out. Okay, it's about done. Yep. That looks great. And I think that's it. Yeah, that looks great. The motion tracking. The mounts fit in perfectly. Yeah, just play around with things and then render it out. Put it in your video. And if there's any questions about anything, if I like didn't cover something in the tutorial that you didn't understand, just put it in the comments and I'll respond within a matter of hours. Because I don't have a life. Goodbye.